Hey, can anyone see this? Can you can can you catch this? This is my hipster lumberjack costume for Halloween. Pretty great, huh? So I wasn't going to make a video today. I, I, I wanted to work on some other projects. You know, I got back from vacation uh, at the beginning of the week, so I've been trying to catch up on stuff, wanted to get some stuff done, and I would have loved to be productive, except this thing has just been bothering me for the last day or so, and I, I just, it's, my God, it's... Fallout 76 is the gift that just keeps on taking. I, I swear, it really is, and I... Just, I'm, I'm just going to make this impromptu video, and I'm, I'm going to lay this all out, because, wow, just, wow, I don't even know what to do with all the things that I'm feeling right now. I, I didn't, I didn't want to talk about this, but then, then, Snowball over here was like, you should really do something about this, because, you know, get it off your chest. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I've never known a unicorn to steer me wrong. So here we are. Here we are. Fallout 76 has had what I would like to refer to as a, uh, a troubled development cycle. Uh, you know, it, it came out, and uh, it was a $60 game that honestly should have been 5 bucks because that's all it was really worth to begin with, uh, based on the time that Bethesda apparently put into it. Uh, it was unfinished. It was basically a beta that they wanted to make you pay full game price for. Uh, it was uh, buggy. It was laggy. Uh, the servers dropped out uh, all the time. It was devoid of basically a, a story or uh, or NPCs. It had no other characters in it. It felt like kind of a, like this big lifeless area, especially compared to other Fallout games, because if you've played any Fallout games, you know that that is not the case. You know, they are supposed to be like these large open worlds that have tons of stuff inside of them, and that really let you determine the fate of a lot of things that are going on. You have real agency in those games. Fallout 76 didn't have any of that, because it was an online game. It was basically like a, a Rust or a Conan. It was uh, the kind of survival game structure. Uh, so, obviously, there's a bunch of things that they can't do. And things like that don't really work in this formula. And, and a lot of things that you just kind of take for granted in previous Fallout games just didn't exist. Like, it, oh, wow, you can actually put all of your stuff into a box and, and it has no weight limit. Well, now in Fallout 76, they had weight limits for all of your scrap and stuff like that. And obviously, Bethesda had realized that this was problematic. They had put out the beta, the, the break early uh, thing that they had talked about. Um, but it became pretty obvious that that's just kind of like a preview for the players that are able to get in on, you know, pre-order, uh, because they, uh, they didn't really do much for fixing that when the game came out. Um, it came out last year to, to pretty mediocre reviews from both the public and from, uh, media outlets. Uh, I kind of felt like <laughs> this was not working, uh, right up from the get-go from concept, and then I actually got the chance to play some of it, and I was like, oh yeah, no, this, this is not working at all, and I can't believe that Bethesda thought that they could release a game in this state, and just in general, with the mechanics that are in this, that they thought that this was a complete full-price game experience. So that kind of failed completely and utterly, and so fast forward to this year's E3, where... You know, Bethesda had to eat some humble pie. At least you'd think that they did. And and yet, nope, not really. Huh, well, I guess we had some troubled problem. I guess we had some problems with our launch. Yeah, yeah, you had some problems with your launch. We have had an incredibly exciting year at Bethesda Game Studios. Given some of that excitement, impressed you're still here. And then they announce new content updates that they're going to do for free. But the, it's kind of laughable. It's funny in retrospect when you think about it. Because the first big thing that they talked about was Wastelanders, right? Wastelanders. What would Wastelanders add to the experience of Fallout 76? Oh, it, this is terrific. NPCs you can talk to with like a storyline. Oh, wow. Wow. I could never imagine a Fallout game having something like that. That's just crazy times. You people are crazy over at Bethesda. 
Your NPCs you talk to. Whoa. Pfft, mind blown. That's right. That's right. Human NPCs are coming to Fallout 76. <laughs> The Wastelanders update is coming this fall and will be free for all Fallout 76 players. But then, the thing that really gets you is when they talk about Nuclear Winter, which is a Battle Royale mode. Fuck yeah, we put a Battle Royale in Fallout 76. That's right. A Battle Royale mode I don't remember anyone asking for. But they spent all their time working on that Nuclear Winter expansion so that they could provide a Battle Royale experience for $60 base price that Fortnite basically already provides for free, or Apex Legend already provides for free, instead of actually fixing the game that they had already sold people. Because the game was still a buggy-ass mess. Okay? The game's still a buggy mess, server problems, all the same problems that they had before. They haven't really done much to fix any of that. Of course they haven't. Why would they bother? But good news, everybody. Bethesda thought what they really needed to do was provide an annual subscription service to their crappy game that feels like an unfinished, half-done, half-assed game experience in the beginning. For the one game, okay, $100 a year, or if you're doing it monthly, 13 bucks. 13 bucks a month. Now, a lot of people may be wondering, okay, this game has to be incredible, right? Has to be amazing in order to justify 13 bucks a month or the very, very good deal of $100 a year. Oh my God, this has got to be the most amazing thing ever. What could you possibly get with Fallout first? Well, the first thing that you get are emotes, right? Everyone loves playing around with emotes. I love changing my, my bass ja jazz hands or, or the little thumbs up to dabbing. Sure, why not? You'll get uh, Adam, right? Uh, uh, 1,650 Adam per month. Uh, which is the uh, the in-game currency, right? Uh, just for the record, uh, anything that you want to buy, right, with the Atom, uh, at launch, at launch, GameSpot actually calculated this, it would cost you 29,160 Atom to get all of the cosmetic stuff that you'd normally be getting with that Atom. Note that that was cosmetic stuff. In fact, if you were to look at it, there are items, things in the game that you could buy that are just cosmetic upgrades that cost more than 1650 Adam. So there are some things that that monthly amount will not even get you. And I love that they promote that as Bethesda throwing it in. You know, this is like free because of your subscription. No, it's not free with the subscription. It's part of your subscription. You are paying for it. In fact, you're paying $13 a month for this. Imagine going into the store and being like, hey, uh, I want to buy these pistachios. And they'd be like, oh, no, it's not that you buy the pistachios. You, you give us $7 for the privilege of shopping here and we'll throw in the pistachios for free. Yeah, that's brilliant marketing, by the way. It's That's just, that's terrific. You get uh, the a unique ranger outfit, something that people have been asking for for a very long time. You know, like the NCR ranger outfit that they had in New Vegas? Uh, yeah, they were like, oh, maybe we could buy that with all of that Adam you're giving us. No, actually, uh, that is just behind the paywall. Uh, another thing that they could have easily just put into the game that they decided to instead monetize out for everybody. Uh, so there's something. I mean, yeah, technically you could claim these and then you apparently won't lose them when you cancel your membership. So I could just get a monthly membership for the one month and get all of this stuff. But even so, that even seems exorbitant. That even seems kind of stupid for me to get a few cosmetic upgrades and some Atom. I mean, I guess for the Atom, considering what they're charging for it... It's not bad, but also, Adam's too damn expensive as it is. So, again, and it's a made-up currency. It's not a real currency. You can't buy anything with this. I just, I, mmm. You can only buy stuff in the game, and it's like all cosmetic. No, sorry, it's not all cosmetic anymore. No, because now some of the time savers that they had put into the game, like the refrigerator, 
Now they're actually going to be doing more of that. So actually there are time savers to problems that they already included in the game by design. They're going to fix it with more Atomic Store stuff. So hey, you know what? Selling you the solution to the problem they created. Terrific. But okay, let's get to the big things. Okay, you'll get an unlimited scrap box. That's right. It's like a box that holds everything. No, no weight limit. You can hold everything in it. Isn't that great? Yeah. Super awesome. Because it's not like they had that in every previous game in the franchise. Again, they created the problem and now they're selling you back the solution. And, oh yes, this is the big thing, is private worlds, private servers, so that you and up to, and I know this number is going to seem insane, you and up to seven other people. Oh my god, a server that can handle eight people at a time. Whew, uh, Bethesda, you're crazy. Mind blown. Great. Of course, the caveat here is that those other seven people that you're playing with also have to be paying that kind of money. So, yeah, that doesn't seem predatory at all. Good job. For that kind of money, all right, I, I could have gotten Netflix, so I have thousands of movies and television shows that I can choose from. I could get Hulu, right? Uh, again, another subscription service where I uh, tons of television shows and movies on demand, right? I, I could pay for an Xbox Game Pass, which, you know, allows me on my Xbox to play uh, basically hundreds of games, uh, download them on demand whenever I want, or I could pay to make a crappy game that was crappy out of the gate, that everybody knew was crap, including Bethesda themselves, slightly better. The, the one game that was one of the biggest disappointments of 2018. Oh, but don't worry. There is so much less. Remember when I was telling you about that amazing Wastelanders expansion, right? The Wastelanders update is coming this fall and will be free for all Fallout 76 players. You know, the one that was uh, going to add NPCs into the game and make it feel a lot more like an actual Fallout experience, the kind of thing that we were hoping to have at the beginning, you know, a Fallout game. Good news, uh, by which I mean bad news, that's gotten delayed. Yeah, we thought we were going to get it by the end of the year. Turns out we're actually going to just wait till as late as March 2020. Yep, that got delayed because that was free content that would be available to everybody who already paid the $60 down for a game that was supposed to be complete out of the gate. Yeah, that's getting delayed. Good news, though. The subscription service was totally the thing they were working on the entire time to sell people back a solution to a problem that they intentionally created so that they could sell a subscription model to you. But the free content updates, those are getting pushed back. The roadmap of content gets a little bit longer, and I think I'm running out of gas. And the thing that makes me really upset about this whole thing is I'm not one to tell people how to spend their money, right? I'm not one to, to do that. Like, you want to spend your money wherever you want to spend it. I, I get you. But the thing is, is that stuff like this, when people buy this crap and, and buy into these predatory tactics that the companies are using, Bethesda, unfortunately, apparently the poster child for it now, it actually does affect the rest of us as consumers. Because what it says to those game companies is, we are absolutely fine with being taken advantage of. We are absolutely fine with paying far more money for a thing that uh, wasn't complete out of the gate. We are perfectly fine with paying $60, not for a game, but for the framework, the buy-in of a game that isn't going to be completed until later, that we're going to be paying a lot more money for. Because that's what they're trying to get us to. The point where $60 isn't what you pay for a game. $60 is now what you are going to be paying for the buy-in to what the game eventually will be. And they are going to sell you everything they possibly can in order to eventually get that game to be something worth playing. But they're not going to sell you that game right out of the box. That would be just ridiculous. Who would do that, right? 
when we accept things like this, right, when we accept these subscription services, the loot boxes, the microtransactions, the, the, the casino gambling crap that they're putting into 2K sports titles and all of that, what we're basically saying is uh, we are going to be fine with mediocrity. We are going to be fine with basically being built for all of our cash. And so when people go out and decide to buy Fallout first, what they're doing is lowering the standard by which game companies are held. They're basically saying that the game companies don't have to do as much. They don't have to do it because what they're really trying to get to, companies like Bethesda and the rest of the, the video gaming AAA society, what they're trying to get to is doing the least amount of work for the most amount of profit. And if we're willing to let them get away with creating the most bog standard, bare bones gaming experience for an exorbitant amount of money, that's what they're going to keep giving you. That's what they're all going to keep giving you from here on out. And you know what? If we support that, we deserve it. We absolutely deserve what we get. Because we're basically enabling them to do that. Oh, but don't worry. This gets even better. This gets even better, folks. Because today I was looking this up, right? And I was like, I wanted to just get some information, some of the more recent reports about these, you know, the premium service, the Fallout First, these private servers. And the first thing that pops up is just the icing on the fucking cake. I swear to God. And it is an article from Forbes from Paul Tassi, and, and the title of the article was, Fallout 76's premium private servers are not private, its scrap box is deleting scrap. So arguably, the two things that people wanted the most out of this subscription service, private servers and an unlimited scrap box, don't even work correctly. Big selling point, private servers. Okay, so already some issues. I know, shocking, Bethesda game issues. But still, they're charging you monthly for this. You would think they would have figured this shit out. Nope, no. Because Fallout First players are already, this was just announced the other day, are already finding that their newly created worlds, these are supposed to be private servers, these are supposed to be specific to them, that that they are not actually new, that they... They are reporting that there are dead NPCs and looted areas when they get there, which, which basically means that there was a previous instance and they're jumping into it. So it's not a new instance. It's not a private world. It's a previously made world that they're now just getting. Ju it's sort of like, um, imagine if you rent a storage locker, all right, and, uh, and, and you get there and you're like, okay, this is a brand new storage locker and it's all mine. And you've, you're, you're paying for it down, and you're paying a monthly fee for it, all right? And you get in there, and there's just a pile of manure in the middle of your storage locker. And you're like, hey, what the hell? And they're like, I don't know. I mean, it's new to you, right? It's just amazing. It's just unbelievable. And oh, yes. Scrap boxes. Yeah, let's talk about the scrap boxes. So I'm just going to read straight from the article so that I don't miss out on anything here. Multiple players are reporting that they have deposited hundreds of units of scrap in these new boxes only to find that the box has eaten it. The scrap disappears from the instance and can't be found again from re-logging or anything. It's just gone. <laughs> That's right. So they're selling you a monthly subscription for a scrap box that doesn't save your scrap, and uh, a private server that isn't actually a new server. Great. Terrific. And the hits just keep coming. It's just so, it's, it's absolutely disheartening because I was a huge fan of Bethesda. I was a huge fan of Bethesda. I've, I've liked all of their games. Yes, they were big, and yes, they had some real bugs, and they had some real problems, but they were big, and they were ambitious, and they were epic. They literally basically built an epic RPG. The definition of an epic RPG. That's Skyrim. That's Fallout 3. That's Fallout 4. You know, those, those are what we expect when we think about epic RPG. They basically built that model of game. 
And what they've turned into is trying to basically sell out their series in order to make as much money as they possibly can because most of their new projects are way on the horizon and I, but for the record, no longer care. And the thing is, if Bethesda doesn't want to make them, don't make them. Have somebody else do it. It started to occur to me that there's actually a great solution to this into the future. If Bethesda Softworks themselves no longer has a passion or an interest to make great quality role-playing experiences, great games into the future, then give their series to the dev houses that they publish. Because you might as well. They have, they have game studios that have much better track records than they ever did. So why not do that? Have id make Fallout from now on. Have id make Fallout. It's going to play better. It's going to play smoother. The gunplay is going to be much more satisfying. They're already used to doing, like, you know, post-apocalyptic kind of worlds because that was kind of what they were trying to do with Rage with a little Mad Max thrown in. But, you know, they could do that. Have Arcane Studios do Elder Scrolls from now on. They made Dishonored, right? Uh, they, they made uh, Prey. People were like, uh, they're making prey, and then it ended up being great, right? Have them do that. They already know, like, how to do stealth action and how to do combat, close quarters combat, stuff like that. How to create kind of like a steampunky sort of world. So fantasy, you know, that's not a huge stretch the way that they were putting things together in Dishonored. Have them do that. Uh, Starfield, obviously you're not very far in that. Um, wasn't Tango one of your studios? Have Tango do it. Tango seems more interested in creating, you know, sp you know, spooky, spooky. It's spooky. <laughs> worlds out there, you know, you might as well have them deal with it. Have Machine Games do it. You saw what they did with the Wolfenstein franchise. They turned it from just like kind of your basic standard shooter set in like a World War II era and made a, this, this beautiful atmospheric game with a great world building great character development, really, really interesting characters and stories, and, and B.J. Blazkowicz actually has a personality now. He's not just, you know, the square head from the original Wolfenstein. He's got, like, a backstory and, and a, like, an emotional motivation for things that they explored in New Order and New Colossus. Have them do Starfield. Why not? It's a brand new IP. Let them run wild with it. If you don't have a passion for the games, have somebody else do it. And you know what? If those studios, your individual studios aren't good enough for it, just sell it off to somebody else. Have CD Projekt Red do one of them. Actually, please, just have CD Projekt Red get the license to one of your series. I, I would love to see what they do. Have Obsidian do it, damn it. That's the thing that always bothers me is like, you could be paying $100 a year for, for this, or $13 a month or whatever, for a game that already kind of failed. You know, that it's already pretty much bargain basement. You're probably going to be paying like $20 or $15 now for the game, and it's only been out for like a year. Most of its fan base is already gone, and people were talking about it becoming a free-to-play game earlier in the year after it had been out for like a couple months. Or you could use your money to go and buy Outer Worlds. Right, which was like a, an Obsidian passion project for the people who made New Vegas, arguably the best in the Fallout franchise, right? Those people who wanted to make a, a brand new world and put a lot of time and effort into making a real RPG, right? That uh, is already getting critical acclaim. I have not gotten a chance to play it yet because it's not technically out when I made this video, but I want to, I absolutely do, and all the information I've gotten so far is that it's great. Or Borderlands 3, which I've been playing for the last month, and I've been enjoying the hell out of it. Hey, cosmetics are already included in that. You play the game, they drop, and you unlock the cosmetics in the game by playing it. And hey, the game is actually much longer than I thought, and oh, here's a novel thought. It's a complete game out of the box. Yeah, there's going to be add-ons. There's actually free content that's dropping this week. But there's add-ons. Yeah, you're going to be paying for that. But you don't need to to feel like it's a complete gaming experience. That's the difference. But there are people out there who would rather spend their money on this. And, and spend so much more money on so much less. Because they, like I used to be, 
are Bethesda fanboys, and they're going to try to justify everything that they do. It's just, it, I've seen it. I've seen it on Twitter. Uh, I, I know that it's on the Reddit. I'm not on Reddit very much, but I, I've seen it on Twitter in response to this, like, well, actually, that's not a really bad value. It's like, yeah, no, it is. It's a terrible value because they said that the value would be inherent in what you were paying for. It, it doesn't... <sighs> So, basically, this video is my breakup with uh, Bethesda. Um, I, I no longer care about any of the games you're, you're coming out with, Bethesda Softworks. I, I just don't. Keep your Starfield. Keep your Elder Scrolls Six. Keep Fallout 5 or whatever. I, I, I honestly don't care. Because I, I can see exactly what you want to do now. After the terrible, terrible launch of Fallout 76, you should have been on your hands and knees trying to make it up to fans of yours. You should have been trying your hardest to, to get back fans that felt betrayed and lost by the stupid things that you were pulling off. Instead, you're trying to bilk them out of even more money. Not cool at all. I don't accept that. But you know what? I've started to realize, you know, if you can't beat them, join them, right? If you can't beat them, join them. So here's what we're going to do. Okay, I'm bringing back Delve Prime. Here we go. Delve Prime's back, folks, with a new subscription model, okay? Uh, this is a monthly service, right, uh, where uh, I will personally send through the mail to any address, any address, this limited monkey trunk sticker to you every month. Okay, it's the same sticker. I have a whole roll of these, folks. I don't think this. I don't think this sticker actually is in existence anymore. I think they've changed the model. This is from a few years back. So this is like this is like an exclusive. This is like an antique now. Okay, I have a whole roll of these, right? And I will I will do it for the Delve Prime subscription model, and it only costs you nine ninety nine a month, right? But here's, here's the better deal, okay? If you pay me $100 a year, now you're in the yearly uh, Delve Prime Squirtle Sticker Squad, okay? Uh, you can get 12 of these. You get your entire 12 for the year. That's a good value uh, for, for just $100 a year. Now, you might be sitting there thinking to yourself, but Nathan, that doesn't seem like a very good deal. All I'm getting is this little sticker. Yeah, well, all you're getting for $13 a month with the Fallout First is a bunch of digital content. This is something you can actually hold in your hand. I can, I can flick it. It's real. It's tangible. Look at that. Woo! I actually hold it in my hands, and I can feel it. It's like a texture and everything. Um, you know, it's better than emote. An emote that my digital character has. How much joy does that really bring you? How much do dabs bring you? Look at this sticker. You can place this anywhere. And you get one a month? Ten. Ten bucks. That's cheaper. That's cheaper than Fallout First. That's good. That's good value. And you know what? If you think that that's a predatory subscription model for some stickers, then you should be absolutely outraged that Bethesda is willing to do it for something that is not even a real sticker. And the fact that there are people that seem just fine with this kind of model is the entire problem. And I don't see it getting better. But hey, I mean, I guess Fallout's finally living up to its name. Meta commentary. You know, and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like, I try to create content that everyone can enjoy. You know, I want to be able to create content that everyone out there can enjoy. Uh, for, for free. If, if I can give it away, I would love to be able to do it so as many people can enjoy it as they possibly can. But, uh, you know what? Screw it. You know, it's one of those things where why would you put all of this time and effort into something you make no money on when I could just send stickers through the mail and get money for that? Because there's people who are willing to pay me. If 10 people are willing to take this kind of a deal, why would I, why would I accept you know, putting a ton of work into something I make basically nothing on. That's, th that's the message to creators, small creators out there now. A big company is willing to bilk you out of a ton of money for bog-standard stuff that should have been part of their game to begin with. And all these indie devs are working their 
asses off to try and create great content that's new and unique and constantly updated all the time. What does it say to all of them? This is the kind of predatory thing that absolutely makes the game industry look terrible. And, um, and the AAA market uh, especially bad. And we, we shouldn't be supporting this. But the sad thing is that there will be a select group of people, and apparently there already are, who do. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, and, uh, I don't know, dislike and unsubscribe. Probably already did. But stickers? Come on! It got a little monkey on it! I don't, I don't like, own the company or anything, but I do own the stickers. <laughs> That's all I needed. The Venmo account isn't up yet, though. <laughs> Someone would do it, right? I'm not gonna tr- No, we're not gonna do- it. Just for the record, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Somebody's gonna ask. These are all mine. <laughs> oh, we're fucked. <laughs> oh, gamers are so fucked. Oh, I love because it's horrifying. Whoo. Uh. Well, we had a good run. <laughs>